In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the price to book ratio and also the book value per share and how to use that to calculate other stuff as well. So let's start with this problem. Number one, a certain company has a market capitalization of $800 million and a book value of $200 million. It has 100 million shares outstanding. A. What is the price to book ratio equal to? So the formula that we could use to calculate the PB ratio is it's equal to the market cap divided by the book value of the company. So the market capitalization is 800 million in this example and the book value is 200 million. So if we cancel the two zeros and the unit M, it's going to be 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So the PB ratio for this particular company is 4. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the book value per share. The book value per share, let's call it B over S, that's going to equal to the book value of the entire company divided by the number of shares outstanding. So the book value of the entire company is 200 million and it has 100 million shares outstanding. So 200 divided by 100 is 2. So the book value is $2 per share. So that's the answer for part B. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the book value. I mean, what is the price of the stock? I was reading part B again. Now to calculate the price of the stock, we can take the market capitalization and divide it by the shares outstanding. Keep in mind, the market cap is equal to the price of the stock times the shares outstanding. So the price is the market cap divided by the shares outstanding. So the market cap is 800 million and there's 100 million shares outstanding. So eight over one, the price of the stock is $8 per share. So that's it for this problem. Number two, company XYZ has 4.5 billion in tangible assets and 2.1 billion in total liabilities. This company has 600 million shares outstanding and this stock is currently trading at 30. Calculate the book value of company XYZ. So what formula do we need? The book value is the difference between the tangible assets and the total liabilities. Now, you can also say that it's equal to the total assets minus the intangible assets and then minus the total liabilities. But once you subtract the total assets from the intangible assets, you're going to get the tangible assets. So the tangible assets are 4.5 billion. The total liabilities, 2.1 billion. So the book value is going to be 2.4 billion. So that's the answer for part A. Now, part B, what is the book value per share for this company? So the formula that we could use, it's going to be the book value for the entire company divided by the shares outstanding. So the book value is 2.4 billion. Now I'm going to convert that into millions. It's important to understand that 1 billion is a thousand million. So 2.4 billion is 2,400 million. The shares outstanding is 600 million. I want to make sure that the units are the same so that they cancel out. So 2,400 divided by 600 is the same as 24 divided by 6. So the book value per share 
is four dollars. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the PB ratio or the price to book ratio. So how can we find this? Now in the first problem we saw that the price to book ratio was equal to the market cap divided by the book value. We know what the book value is but we don't know the market cap. We could find it though. The market cap is equal to the price of the stock which is basically the price per share times the shares outstanding. The book value is equal to the book value per share times the shares outstanding. So if we cancel the shares outstanding, we can get another formula that will help us to calculate the PB ratio. That is the price per share divided by the book per share, thus PB. So the price per share is $30. And the book value per share is $4. So dividing these two numbers, it's going to be 7.5. So that is the PB ratio for this company. Now I have a question for you. First, let me get rid of some stuff. So let's say we have two companies, company A and company B. Now company A has a book value per share of let's say positive 4.5. And company B has a book value per share of let's say negative 3.9. What is the difference between a positive book value per share and a negative book value per share? So keep in mind the formula for the book value. It's the total assets, or rather the tangible assets, minus the total liabilities. So if the book value per share is positive, this means that the tangible assets is greater than the total liabilities, which is a good thing. If the book value per share is negative, then it means that the tangible assets is less than the total liabilities. That's not a good thing. That means that this company may have a lot of debt. Now let's move on to number three. Company ABC has a market cap of 8 billion and a PB ratio of four. It has 500 million shares outstanding. What is the book value for this company? So earlier we said that the PB ratio is the market cap divided by the book value. And if we rearrange this equation by switching these two, we'll get this formula. The book value is equal to the market cap divided by the PB ratio. So the market cap is 8 billion. The PB ratio is 4. So the book value is 2 billion. So that's the answer for part A in this problem. Now, let's move on to part B. What is the share price for this company? We've seen this formula already. The share price is going to be the market cap divided by the shares outstanding. So the market cap is still $8 billion. The shares outstanding is $500 million. Now, we can't divide it like this, so we need to change something. We can change this into billion or that into million. So we said that $1 billion is 1,000 million. Thus, 8 billion is going to be 8,000 times a million. So we have 8,000 divided by 500. If we cancel two zeros in the M, this becomes 80 over 5. This shouldn't be a dollar symbol. So $80 divided by 5 is 16. So that's the share price for this company. So each stock has a price of $16. That's what the market is willing to pay at this point. So that's it for part B. Now, let's move on to part C. Now keep in mind the book value 
is two billion dollars. So in part C, we need to calculate the book value per share. There's two ways in which we can do that. We can take the book value, which we already know, and then divide it by the shares outstanding. So that will give us the book value per share. So the book value is 2 billion, which is equal to 2,000 times a million. And then there's 500 million shares. So if we cancel two zeros in the M, this is going to be 20 divided by 5. So the book value per share is $4. Now let's talk about another way in which we can get the same answer. Earlier, we said that the PB ratio is equal to the share price divided by the book value per share. So if we rearrange this equation by switching these two, we can get that the book value per share is equal to the price of the stock divided by the price per book ratio. So that's the formula that we want to use. That's the second way in which we can get the book value per share. So the price of the stock is, what was the answer that we got earlier? I forgot. So it was uh, 8 billion divided by 500 million. So that was $16. I should have wrote that down. Now, the next thing we need is the PB ratio. The PB ratio is four. So 16 divided by 4 gives us $4 per share, which is the same as what we see here. So those are the two ways in which we can calculate the book value per share. It's the book value divided by the shares outstanding, or you could take the price of the stock and divide it by the PB ratio. That'll give you the same answer. The PB ratio and the book value per share can be used to determine if a company is undervalued or overvalued relative to what the company is worth and what the market is willing to pay for it. An undervalued company will typically have a PB ratio that is less than one. Now granted, this is just one indicator. You have to look at other things as well. This is not the only thing you should, you should look at. But if the PB ratio is under one, that's a good indicator that the company might be undervalued. Another thing is to compare the price of the stock and the book value per share. If the price of the stock is less than the book value per share, that's another indication that it might be undervalued. Or if the market capitalization, that is how much the market is willing to pay for the entire company, if that's less than the book value of the entire company, then that's another indication that the company might be undervalued. So you have three things you could look at. The PB ratio, or you can compare the price and the book value per share, or the market cap and the book value. This one is the quickest way to tell if it's undervalued or overvalued. Now an overvalued stock, relative to what the company is really worth, is the opposite. If the PB ratio is significantly higher than one, it's a good indication that it may be overvalued. It's not a guarantee. Once again, you need to look at other factors. If the price is greater than the book value per share, that's another indication the company might be overvalued. Or if the market cap exceeds the book value. So let's explain this with a visual illustration. Let's make a table. So let's say this is company A, company B, and company C. In the first column, I'm going to put the price of the stock. And then in the second column, the PB ratio. So we're going to say that the price of the stock is the same for all three companies. But the PB ratio won't be the same. We're going to say for company A is 0.1 for B it's 1, and for C it's 10. So now let's calculate the book value per share for each of these companies. 
So keep in mind, the book value per share is the share price divided by the PB ratio. So for company B, it's 10 divided by 1, which is 10. For C, it's 10 over 10, which is 1. And for A, it's 10 divided by 0.1, which is 100. So we said that a company that is typically that is undervalued will have a, a PB ratio of less than 1. So A would be the company that is relatively undervalued, and C will be the company that is overvalued. C has a PB ratio much larger than 1. And as you can see, for A, the price is less than the book value per share. And whenever you see that, whenever the price is less than the book value per share, it's an indication, not a guarantee, but an indication that the company may be undervalued. Now, let's say that the market cap for each of these companies is $1 billion. Now, let's calculate the book value. The book value is the market cap divided by the PB ratio. So 1 billion divided by 1 is going to be 1 billion. 1 billion divided by 0.1, that's 10 billion. 1 billion divided by 10, that's 100 million. So as you can see, A is definitely the company that is undervalued. The market cap is 1 billion, but the book value of the company is 10 billion. So this is how much the market is willing to pay for the company. But as you can see, the value of the company is much greater. So a company is also undervalued when the book value exceeds the market cap, or you could say when the market cap is less than the book value. So those are some indicators that a company might be undervalued. One, if it has a low PB ratio. Two, if the price is less than the book value per share. Or three, if the market cap is less than the book value.